we are now going to talk about infinite geometric series and how some of them have finite sums. So remember that the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series is a1 times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. Well, as we let n approach infinity, it turns out that some of these will approach a specific number, s. And so we could rewrite this as s equals the sum of i equals 1 to infinity, a1 r to the i minus 1. And so this is one way of writing out an infinite geometric series and getting its sum. But if r is between minus 1 and 1, or in other words, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then we get a specific case because the value of r to the n will get closer and closer to 0 as n gets closer and closer to infinity. So we're adding less and less each time. So for instance, if we have 1 half to the n, then this number gets closer and closer to 0 the bigger n is because we keep getting it 1 over 2 to a bigger number because 1 to anything is just 1. So 1 over 1024 is closer, but 1 over 2048 is even closer, and so on and so forth. And it gets closer and closer to 0 as n approaches infinity. This is that whole idea of the asymptotes when we were talking about exponentials and logarithms, for instance. So if r is between minus 1 and 1, then we get the following. We start with our Sn equals a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Well, this is the same as 1 minus 0, 1 minus r as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We're replacing this because n is approaching infinity which means that this is the same thing as just a1 times 1, which is just 1, over 1 minus r. So if r is between, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then we get a finite sum with s infinity equals a1 over 1 minus r. Sometimes we'll just leave it as just an s. We don't write it as sn anymore. Just as s. So, we're just going to quickly look at some examples. Suppose I have the sequence 6, 3, 3 halves, 3 fourths, dot, dot, dot. And I want to know, will this have a finite sum if I treat it as a series. So the first thing we have to do, we know what a1 is, but r is equal to a2 over a1, which is 3 divided by 6, which is 1 half. Notice it also has to be a3 divided by a2, which is 3 halves divided by 3, which is 3 halves times 1 third, which sure enough is 1 half. And since these are both 1 half, and the absolute value of 1 half is less than 1, this will have a finite sum. What about instead, if we do the same thing, but with 16, 24, 36, 54, 81, dot, dot, dot. Well, again, we know a1, which isn't really relevant to this part of the conversation. But r is equal to a2 divided by a1, which is 24 over 16 which is 3 halves. If we do the same thing with a3 over a2, that gives me 36 over 24, which is also 3 halves. So this, sure enough, is a geometric sequence. And it's an infinitely geometric series if we were to add all these together. But 3 halves is bigger than 1, so this is will not have a, a finite sum. It'll add up to, it'll keep adding up to infinity because the number isn't getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Instead, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's what we're looking for. Look for your r and just make sure it's less than 1 and we will find a finite sum if we were to add all of the terms together.